The world has been warming unusually quickly in recent decades. Temperatures globally are now around one degree above pre-industrial times. That is mainly due to the greenhouse gases pumped into the atmosphere by human activity since the Industrial Revolution. The consequences of this are being felt already. More heat waves and wildfires. More severe storms and worse floods. Loss of polar ice caps and rising sea levels. The only way to stop runaway global warming and avoid its most catastrophic consequences is to stabilise the amount of emissions in the atmosphere. To do that, the world needs to remove as much greenhouse gases from the atmosphere as it adds each year. Known as reaching net zero emissions. That involves things like tree planting or carbon capture technologies to reduce amounts emitted and increase amounts removed. The world committed to stabilising global temperatures in Paris in 2015. And last year, our government passed legislation requiring us to get to net zero here by 2050. But what does this mean for the UK government's finances? First, between now and 2050, the fiscal costs of reducing net emissions to zero are significant. For the UK, much of this cost comes from the need to replace millions of household gas boilers with either electric or hydrogen fuelled alternatives. But a second key finding is that the costs of failing to get climate change under control would be even larger and could cost the government a lot more. So the net benefits of a successful global response are huge. Third, there are significant fiscal benefits from transitioning to net zero sooner rather than later. One key fiscal opportunity is the revenues that would come from levying a carbon tax and be used to pay for some of the investments in zero carbon technologies. You can read more about the fiscal choices and trade-offs involved in getting to net zero in our 2021 Fiscal Risk Report.